we found him, everyone. We found him, we found him, we found him. He did we move down the opposite him. direction. There he goes. There he goes. We'll get a view of him. He looked as if he was stalking something. There he goes. He's just moving through the bush at the moment. As I said, the temperature cooling down, chances of finding him are a bit better. And there he is, right here next to us. I'm not sure what he saw. It may have been a, a little Daker or a Steenbock. There he is. Unfollow my audio. Just going to move a little bit. No, it's fine. We'll, we'll sit tight here. We'll sit tight. Oh, <laughs> well, this has made my afternoon. Thankfully. It was Craig that spotted him too. Saw his head sticking out in front of us. We came back down the same road. Again, you see the persistence driving around a few more times just paid off. And luckily we got to find him. And just in time because now he's moving even further away from the dam. Just going to move off the road slightly. And there's a car behind us. So I just want to give them a, a view of this leopard too. We'll, we'll wait for him. He might, uh, he might decide to come out into the road. Let's just wait and see. There we go, there he is. He is approaching the road now. Isn't that a nice surprise? You see, once we found him, then he decides to walk out in the road. But before that, he was hiding in a thicket. Oh, that lovely view. Oh, what a nice surprise. Wasn't that great? So we'll try to follow him for a little while and see where he goes. You see, it, it appears as if he's, I don't know if he's hunting necessarily, but leopards are always very opportunistic. So they'll have a look around and if they flush anything, as we did while we were driving through that drainage line, we flushed a little stienbok. So this leopard would be looking for something like that, a stienbok or a diker, possibly impala if he does see any. Just try and move again. <laughs> and Paul, you say this is your favorite big cat. Oh, where did your favorite big cat go, Paul? Can you see him there? Oh, there he is, yeah. It's amazing how they can sometimes disappear and move around quite quickly. I once um, was following a leopard, and uh, and it was a female. She was walking down the road, and we thought we'll drive around and just wait for her basically on the corner and try to get a nice view of her walking down the road. And... Um, she we lost a view of her for a split second and she disappeared we couldn't find her again she disappeared into the long grass it was incredible really amazing to see i guess that's why these animals are so elusive but when you do see them it is really such a lovely surprise hear some uh, rattling cysticulars alarm calling at the leopard while he's walking now we might see what they often do I can still see him there just moving through there what they what they often do is when these birds alarm call at them the leopards occasionally lift their tails up now he's not quite doing it at the moment the reason for that is there's a very clear white marking under the tail so when these birds alarm call at the leopards when they're walking through the bush they lift the tail up 
to make themselves more visible. And the reason for that, well, the theory behind it is that they're showing that they're not a threat. They're no, no danger. They're just passing through. So they're lifting their tails up, making themselves more visible to hopefully stop those birds from alarm calling at them. Because what happens is then they, get, they draw a lot of attention to them, which they don't want. But it is interesting. You'll often see it with leopards walking and they, um, they lift their tails immediately. There he comes. Not sure if he's seen anything again. Sam, you say leopards are so mysterious. Yes, mysterious, um, elusive. They really are, really are wonderful, wonderful animals. And you see how he's constantly scanning and checking the area. And Jesse, you asked, have I ever been frightened by a leopard? Um, I told a story the other day, actually, we were tracking a big male leopard uh, down in the south on Londolozi, and uh, this leopard, <laughs> we walked around the car for about five minutes, we couldn't see where the tracks went, and as we took two steps off the road, he basically burst out of the bushes in front of us, he was lying there the whole time hiding, and, um, and as soon as we took st uh, steps towards him, he then uh, gave to the back of the bush again um, but we got both myself and my tracker that I worked with uh, Judas my friend he um, him and I both got a fright the guests laughed at us they thought it was quite funny <laughs> so I've been I've got one or two frights from leopards before I'll just see where he's going. It would be wonderful if we saw some impala up ahead. Or any small antelope could be could be quite interesting. But again, just look how well he blends in. As soon as he starts walking behind these trees, now you can see him quite nicely with um, because of Craig's great camera work. But for us sitting here it's actually quite difficult but once he goes through that long grass he disappears oh did he see something there he seemed to just run he just had a little little dart at something but he stopped again <laughs> it could also be a little mongoose or, oh what's he seen What's he seen? Hold on, I don't want to lose him. Uh, Craig, I'm going to try to squeeze through here quickly. goes there he goes still got him straight ahead just gonna park here let's just see he's straight ahead of us but let's just see and scan if he has spotted something up ahead the way he what the way he darted off he, he uh, like I said it could have been mongoose it could have been Franklin's um, although the Franklin's probably would have made a noise Bobby, interesting question. You asked if the leopard's fur is smooth or coarse. Now, Bobby, I've never felt a leopard's fur, um, but I believe that the leopard's fur is actually very soft, very smooth, very soft. Now, the other big cats, lion and cheetah, are very coarse. Their hair is very coarse. I've felt cheetah before. And um, I'm just going to stop here again. So I'm giving him a bit of space. I don't want to disturb him too much. Um, so we're quite, we're quite far from him now, but he's still just ahead of us. Also, I'm driving off road so that I don't lose a view of him. I'm just checking out in front of him to see 
if there is anything. But look, look how well he disappears in that in that grass. Look at that! Isn't that camouflage in, uh, incredible? So Bobby, yeah. So I believe that the leopard's fur is quite soft. I was probably going to come out on that road again, um, and maybe that's why I stopped to look around, just to see if he if he does expose himself out into the open. If nothing is there to potentially see him. <laughs> well, while we <laughs> while we wait for Hassanah to expose himself. Let's go to James, and hopefully he doesn't expose himself, but he's in the Mara. <laughs> Let's see what my old friend James Henry is up to.